Hey everybody, as you can probably tell, I am sitting in the lobby of our beautiful new building on a beautiful fall day. Uh, so glad to be in God's word with you today. Today's reading is from the book of 1 Samuel. Uh, we're in chapters 28 through 31, and when I read this, I just thought, wow, there is a lot of content in these chapters. Um, David has been anointed king, but he's still on the run. Saul is still pursuing him. Saul's leadership is unraveling. David has taken refuge with the Philistines. The kingdom is basically in chaos. But in the midst of it all, David is remaining faithful and true to the Lord. David is still inquiring of the Lord. He's still trusting in the Lord. And the section that God really drew my attention to is in chapter 30. This is the part where David and his men have left the city where um, they've been living, Ziklag. And the Amalekites have come in their absence and they raided the city. They burned everything to the ground. They stole everything and they took everything, including all the women and children, also including David's wives. So David is trusting in the Lord and the Lord has assured him of victory. So now he's pursuing the Amalekites to destroy them and take back everything that they have stolen. And he's doing it with only two thirds of his men because 200 of them were literally too exhausted to fight and pursue the Amalekites in battle. So with only 400 men, David still soundly defeats the Amalekites and verse 18 and 19 tells us, so David recovered all that the Amalekites had, had taken and rescued his two wives and nothing of theirs was missing, whether small or great, sons or daughters, plunder or anything that they had taken for themselves. David brought it all back. But then, David gets back to his camp and greed begins to rear its ugly head with David's men, right? The men who took part in the battle do not want to share what they have recovered with the 200 men who did not go into battle with them. Listen to what the scripture says. Then all the wicked and worthless men among those who went with David said this, since they did not go with us, we will not give them any of the spoils that we have recovered, except to every man, his wife and his children, so that they may lead them away and leave. I love how the Bible calls these guys wicked and worthless. These guys are like, okay, we'll give them back their wives and family, but we get to keep and divide up all their stuff. But David, who is a man after God's own heart, says differently. His whole perspective is different. I love this. David says, you must not do so, my brothers, with what the Lord has given us. For he has protected us and handed over to us the band of raiders that came against us. Notice that when the men are talking about the battle, who do they give the credit to? Verse 22 says, we will not give them any of the spoils that we have recovered. That's what those guys said. But David knows better. He says, you must not do so, my brothers, with what the Lord has given us. For he has protected us and he has handed over to us the band of raiders that came against us. David knows that the victory is the Lord's, not his. The wives, the children, all the property that was recovered from the Amalekites is because God gave them the victory. And because his heart is aligned with God's heart, he is able to give generously and share generously because God has given so generously to him. And David is so convicted by this that he not only does it this one time, but he decrees it into law. Verse 24 says, as is the share of the one who goes down into the battle, so shall be the share of the one who stays by the baggage they shall share alike. And so it has been from that day forward that he made it a statue and an ordinance for Israel to this very day. And then I really love the way this chapter ends. David's heart is so full of gratitude from the Lord's provision, from the Lord's protection, that he just goes out to everyone and shares all the spoils of victory. Think how that must have made those wicked and worthless guys feel. Not only does David share all this booty with the guys who stayed behind, he starts giving it all away to everybody else, even the people who weren't even in the battle. The last verses of this chapter say, he sent some of the spoils to the elders of Judah, Bethel. It goes on and on. It names town after town, city after city, community after community. David just gives and gives and gives away all of the spoils of battle. He basically gives it all away. And why? I think it's because he knows it was never his to begin with. When you live a life of gratitude to the God of abundance who gives all things to his children, it also enables you to live a life of lavish, crazy generosity. And I think that's what David discovered. And I know that was what the Lord was teaching me through this amazing passage. So I hope you guys have a great day. I hope it's filled with the Lord's generosity. I love you. We'll see you next time.